we're now going to talk about capturing the voice. Um, the voice actually is the foundation of your whole digital story. It's going to dictate the pace, the feel and the structure of your story. So getting it right, getting the voice right, um, is really important. Um, unfortunately, if you stick a microphone in most people's faces, they look a bit like the picture behind. They often say, oh, I hate the sound of my own voice, or, oh, I was feeling quite relaxed until you pointed that in my face. So really, in order to capture a voice, to effectively get a performance out of somebody, which is what we're trying to achieve, we need to make them relaxed and at ease. So I'm just going to, I've got Ab here, and she's going to read her digital story out in a minute. But first, we're just going to, really helps, I think, to just to talk through what's going to happen with the person. So Ab, we're just about to record your digital story. But there's a few things I need to let you know about, first of all. Um, we want to hear it in your voice. We know that you're not a professional voiceover and we're not expecting you to be. So we can stop, we can start. By the power of the magical box of digital tricks we have, digital editing, we can, we can close the gaps. We can drop in bits here and there. We might like the start of your story. We might like the end of your story and we can actually cut them together. So <coughs> don't worry about stopping and starting. That's absolutely fine. OK, let's also talk about um, body language as well, which is really important. Do you think Ab looks quite relaxed and chilled out to you? Well, a lot of people, like I've said before, when you stick that there, everything changes. So are they gripping onto the size of their seat for dear life? Is their breathing all kind of shallow and they look really, really nervous? You're not going to get a great performance out of them and their voice is going to sound really nervous if you don't relax them. So Ab, would you prefer to sit down or maybe stand up and do your story? I'm going to sit down. Yeah. Again, some people prefer to stand up to present. Um, so just ask your sort of person who's reading, you know, recording the story which would they prefer. Um, the other thing as well, you can get them to read the script aloud just to have a little bit of a check really. Um, it's good if you're recording because you can check the levels of their voice but also it's a kind of a way to break the ice as well. And sometimes what can happen is someone can do a great delivery of their story in the first take. And it's quite unusual because obviously we're not professionals so it's worth just recording just in case. Um, the other thing I need to talk to Ab about with her story is emotions, sort of connecting with the story. If there's emotional bits in there, we need to hear that in your voice. If there's sad bits, then we need to sound sad. Obviously, if there's thoughtful bits, we need to sort of lower the register of your voice as well. And think about the pace of the story. If there's a really exciting bit or a passionate bit or, you know, your voice needs to maybe speed up, but you could equally, for dramatic effect, pause at the end of a sentence if you want to convey something that's really important to you in the, in the story. So think about your emotions and talk about your pacing as well. First of all, Ab, are you comfortable? Yes. Are you ready to go? Yes. Don't worry about getting you know, it all in one take straight away. You can absolutely stop and start if you need to, OK? So let's just um, do a bit, a, bit of a, a bit of a rehearsal, shall we? So go ahead. OK, the woman on the left of this picture is my grandmother. She's called Elfrida and the baby is my mother. They are on a beach in Bournemouth in the late 1930s. My grandmother had travelled from the north of England in Newcastle to Bournemouth to find work. She was from a poor mining family. Her father had been on the Jarrow March. Her mother was called Elizabeth Wolfe and they were all from Newcastle. I'm just going to stop you there because we've done a bit of a chunk there so we can stop there and we can go back and do it again if we want to. So what I'm just going to ask Ab to do is just to slow down a little bit, OK? She probably doesn't feel like she's speaking too quickly, but when it's actually um, recorded, just, it's just worth slowing down slightly. The other thing, um, Ab, is in your script, there's a couple of things that you would probably not use in everyday language. Well, just in terms of, you say, they are on a beach, just shorten it to make it conversational. They're on a beach. And just try and make it sound a little less like it's being read. OK, so that you're having, imagine you're having a conversation with a, um, you know, a family member or a friend. Let's just take it from the top and let's try again. The woman on the left of this picture is my grandmother. She's called Elfrida. And the baby is my mother. They're on a beach in Bournemouth in the late 1930s. My grandmother had travelled from the north of England, Newcastle, to Bournemouth to find work. She was from a poor mining family. Her father had been on the Jarrow March. Her mother was called Elizabeth Wolfe, and they were all from Newcastle. So the pace is much better, as you can tell. It's a lot slower, isn't it, and a lot clearer. Um, I think Ab still needs to work on it, making it sound a bit more conversational. And the opening sentence just could be improved ever so slightly by, imagine if you just said, see the woman on the left of the picture. That's my grandmother. Just to make it sound less like you're reading from a kind of a script and you're actually pointing people into your picture as well. 
and again, run some of your sentences together. The short sentences are great. She was from a poor mining family and her father had been on the Jarrow March. Her mother was called Elizabeth Wolfe and they were all from Newcastle. Do you see what I mean? It just makes a difference just to run the sentences together. Make it, make it sound like it's a conversation, like she's telling me something. Good stuff, though. Thank you. How does it feel? <laughs> I think it's terrifying. It feels like that. <laughs>